time for our 360 round all about the financial sector. We saw them highlighted beginning on Friday. We saw some good numbers out of J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, BlackRock. We're all in focus on Friday, and we have a slew of the big banks due this week. We'll watch Citigroup, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, among others, just to name a few. We're likely to be in a lower interest rate environment, though that's not necessarily evident in the last couple of days. Kenneth Leon is with us, Global Director, Industry and Equity Research, CFRA, and Stephen Bigger is with us, Director of Financial Services Research at Argus Research. Thank you both for being with us. Kenneth, I know you have um, a buy rating on J.P. Morgan, for example. What stood out from what we've learned from the bank earnings thus far, and how will it make you watch certain parameters this week? Yeah, it's great to be here. So really no surprises uh, compared to our preview. Uh, we're overweighted financials from a strategy standpoint. Uh, we think the largest banks and uh, really uh, some of the other major financial companies are going to be delivering strong results, strong outlook. Um, I think on differentiation <clears throat> with the largest banks will be, as we have Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, uh, which don't have the high uh, exposure or, or percentage of revenue from net interest income, but benefiting from investment banking and other services. Uh, I think additionally, our analyst, Alexander Yoakum, who covers uh, the regional banks and smaller banks, you know, we're seeing a picture of still a pretty healthy consumer. Every quarter, we go through the entire banking industry looking at credit risk measures. And, and so far, things are good. So I would say stay the yeah. course with financials and these banks. Yeah, and I saw there's a buy on uh, Goldman Sachs. You have a buy on Morgan Stanley, the buy on J.P. Morgan that I mentioned. Stephen Bigger, you were looking at these. You did note some of the, you know, the lending that slowed for credit card sluggish loan growth. But the big picture here is still pretty good. I mean, you said net charge-offs, for example, were maintained. Some of your thoughts from the quarter. Yeah, hi, Nicole. Uh, so, yeah, I think the results were, were pretty good. And, and, you know, you saw the bank group rally on, on Friday and I think for good reason. Uh, so yeah, loan growth has has been sluggish. High rates have persisted now for a couple of years, and that's that's put a a, a big uh, headwind in in lending growth at this point. But uh, low rates, uh, lower rates from the Fed, I think are going to help. We've had a, a lower rates from the on the ten year side al already, and that's uh, that should help stimulate some growth, uh, loan growth. But you know, you also look at deposit costs, uh, and those should start moving in the right direction uh, downward as the Fed has uh, begun to ease here. So a little bit you know, better picture for the net interest margins uh, going forward. Uh, and then you did mention uh, you know, card losses uh, and just net charge offs in general. So I think that's a, uh, for JP Morgan, maintain that 3.4% net charge off guidance. Uh, and their you know, credit cards had been a worry uh, going in. We've had uh, some pretty uh, robust growth uh, in there. It did slow down a little bit uh, card lending growth, uh, but to be able to maintain that 3.4%, uh, I think shows that uh, they feel the consumer is in, is in good shape here and credit quality is, is not a concern uh, for at least the next few quarters. Yeah, we'll hear from Bank of America tomorrow, Morgan Stanley on the 16th, for example. Do you have buy ratings on any of these names, Stephen, right now? I do. We like uh, we reiterated the buys on on J.P. Morgan uh, and uh, BlackRock as well and uh, Wells Fargo. So uh, and we have buys on Goldman and Morgan Stanley. I think this uh, rebound in, in capital markets is durable. Uh, fixed income issuance is doing fantastic as net credit spreads have have fallen. Uh, equity underwriting rebounding, M&A activity <clears throat> rising on, on better CEO confidence levels. So so it's really a, a pretty strong narrative, I think, for banks across the board here. Um, we do note here the deal making. We've seen a lot of investment banking. Um, the other thing that we always watch are the rates, but that doesn't seem to be as big of a topic at this moment. Kenneth Leon, you've seen a lot of deal making and investment banking and things like that, right? How's that looking? Yeah, so, so rates are, are always an issue. Uh, we've seen the first nine months of this year uh, record performance for uh, debt underwriting. Uh, the equity markets, particularly IPOs, a little bit slower, but beginning to come off the trough from last year. Uh, and additionally, just rate specific across the table, um, it's just getting comfortable where rates will be. They don't have to go to zero, 
uh, but between buyers and sellers. So, for example, when you look at areas like M&A or even equity underwriting, financial sponsors have been a much smaller percentage of the total business. That will increase uh, over the next 12 to 18 months because they're sitting on $1.2 trillion. These are companies that I cover, the private equity firms, uh, that need to monetize that so they can uh, get to new fundraising. Uh, so I think a lot of good activity ahead, just knowing where rates can be. It doesn't matter whether it's 20 or 50 basis points here or there. It's just getting a sense uh, in the parameters. Uh, and that's going to be good for the Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley's especially. Wonderful to see you both. Thank you so much. Kenneth Leon and Stephen Bigger, thank you both for a great look there at the banks.